Well, hello and welcome to Sunday Night Live episode 13. It's really great having you with us. And today we're going to be speaking about a bunch of cool things. But maybe to kick off is we're going to be asking the question that people have been asking for the past few weeks. Now, we're something... We're going to be busting the myth. We're going to bust that we're myth. We're not going right to ask now. the question. People have been asking the question, but we're going to answer the this very big question. That big question. And I know like people have been calling in. Mm. The, the phone's been ringing off the hook. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've had people that have told us that they had sleepless nights of sitting and thinking about they this thing. They want to know. They yeah. want to know the truth. I mean, even the Scorpions and the, and the Falcons the, the, the rocked Zondo up here. The Zondo Commission phoned me. They yeah. also wanted to know. They cannot continue the cases mm. without knowing this. Yeah. Um, this has literally happened. Mm. So the thing is this. We want to know what's underneath Aiden Lee's beanie. You've seen her um, in How to Church or any other show uh, on a Sunday mm. with the recordings, with everything. She's always wearing a beanie and we want to know what, what is she hiding? Even at Checkers, like I saw one time at Checkers, mm. she was wearing a beanie. Yeah, Everywhere. she's never not wearing a beanie. Exactly. So, I mean, so there's been some theories as to what is happening underneath Aiden Lee's beanie. Mm. So I mean, one of the theories... Yeah, there was mm. Lord Voldemort that's apparently at the back of her head. Oh, like that his was, face. His is there, face yeah? is there, yeah. that's why she's covering it the whole time. Mm. Um, well, my theory is that she was smuggling cigarettes. Mm. She's like a lockdown. drug mule, a little yeah. drug mule. That could Especially be, in the lockdown, I think she's, you know, it's good for business. Good for business, yeah. yeah, definitely. There's another, yeah, there's another couple of theories on that. Maybe you can tell us what you think's happening underneath. Could be. Aiden Lee's beanie. Yeah. That could be something. But we actually found out. We're going to give you the answer. Are you guys ready? Okay, in three, three two, two, one. one. Introducing Aiden the Lee. new Aiden Lee. The new Aiden Lee. Uh, hi, not wearing a beanie. Yeah. I'm pretty yes. sure that's not Aiden Lee though. No, this is Aiden that's Lee. can't be, she wears a beanie. I did a DNA like, test, I, I also didn't Aiden believe Lee. it. How yes. did you do a DNA test? <laughs> yeah. anyway. What did you do to Aiden Lee? Yeah. No, but the, the, the truth of the matter is she was growing her hair. She's been growing my hair since I like lockdown it. started. I like it. I like it. Thank also you. Looks good. It's been four years since I've not had like short, short hair. Sure. Okay. Four years. So tell us, why did you decide to grow your hair? Well, it kind of just started out with lockdown level five. So as you would know, I wasn't allowed to cut my hair because hairdressers weren't allowed to operate business. And then somewhere around the start of May or something, I just figured, well, maybe I should just push through, keep going, grow it long. And that's what happened. So not as exciting as Lord Voldemort or smuggling cigarettes or anything like that. Just been growing my hair and it's now kind of just past that really awkward phase so I can start revealing it to the general public. Well done. So, You've yeah. pushed through. Pushed You've through. had lots of endurance. But I mean, show it off a little bit. Show the viewers both yeah. sides. So you can see, so th this Next side's side. still pretty short, so that's no why it has to be like the tip. There's no yeah. Voldemort, as yeah, you can yeah, yeah. see, just hair at the back. Nice. Really been enjoying the longer hair, mm. so it's lots of fun. Oh, I think, yeah? I'm pretty sure that's what I believe. <laughs> <laughs> He's still not going <laughs> to. I, I think maybe I should grow my hair like that. Do yeah, it. maybe you should just start growing it. Well, then yeah. will be wearing beanies for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Obol, yeah. you look good. <laughs> Anyways. So um, maybe our viewers can also tell us whether Aiden Lee should continue growing her hair or whether should she I should do? cut it. Or, or color it. Color it. Or color, color Open it. Or put any like one of, one of those purple stripes in yeah. there. Yeah. I'm really committed. So if yeah, you can throw committed. out like yeah. a really crazy request, yeah. I might just do it. Just go full Britney. Full Britney. Like just... Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So okay. Let, let, but let, I vote you continue growing it. Let it, us know nice. in the comments. It's, Keep it short, okay. grow it long, mm. go, go full Britney. Go full Rapunzel. Color it, Rapunzel. Mm. Let me know. Well, speaking about keeping it short, let's get into the show. So today ah. we are speaking about, on the Good Question Show, mm. uh, we are asking the question, how do I know when God speaks to me? You just hear, you, just hear him. Like, oh, yeah. ears. We're going to be speaking about that. Okay. Yeah, you're going to tell us how to hear him. Yeah. And then also we're going to be checking in with a wonderful testimony uh, as usual. And then also we are still busy with our generosity build up. So we are going to be interviewing something, someone today. I don't know who it is on the interview, but we're going to see. We'll see. We'll okay. see just now. Let's go to the show then. How, how are we going to do the countdown? Maybe... Maybe with uh, Aiden Lee, seeing that your hair is all beautiful, um, mm. we're going to take a few moments, we're going to put a count down there next to you. Just like and on then, my skull. With yeah, my we'll, we'll, we'll try and put it Somewhere there, there you can just, show, there, off just show off your hair first. Yes. Okay. Like yeah. a little tre tresemme. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go. I'll say, nice. Looking good. Feeling positive. Huh? 
How do I hear God speak to me? You use your ears, dummy. It's not that simple, Brent. Not, not, not everyone hears the audible voice of God. In fact, very few people, I don't think I've ever heard God speaking audibly to me. Yeah. But we're going to speak about other ways that God speaks to us. Hmm. Oh, my son, it is I, your father. Told you. This is the Good Question Show. Just tell me what I want to know. The Good Question Show. Welcome to the Good Question Show. Today we ask the question, how do I hear God speak to me? Yeah, so maybe before we get to that, we've got something really exciting happening next week. And we've got yes. Aiden Lee to yes. tell us a bit about that. Aiden? Mm. Yes. So next week on the Good Question Show, we are going to have an all-girl takeover. We're going to kick you guys out of yes. your chairs like the young, strong, independent women we are. Come on. And um, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of issues specifically relating to women and faith. So mm. we're going to talk Good. about what does it mean to be a strong, godly woman? Does Proverbs 21 just equal feminism? What's up with that? Mm. Where does that fit in? So make sure you tune in for that. It's going to be really exciting. That's yeah. great. That's yes. good. We, we just knew that we're going to mess that topic up mm. totally. Yeah. Um, and Aiden told you us will mess we, it up. we will mess it up. Yes. And then but I'm pretty sure I feel like over. a young independent woman right now. You go, girl. <laughs> anyway, excited. can't wait for next week. And even yeah. for the guys, make sure you watch next week. I think this is especially important for the guys to tune in for next week and learn a little bit um, just about this topic. We can give yeah. you insight into a woman's brain. Yes, yes, yes. So, so just quickly give us some insight on... What are some of the craziest things that people have said in the world, God said? That's a dangerous statement. If someone says, yes. God said, I must or yes. I am or whatever. So two crazy things that I actually read up on this morning, right before you know the show, mm -hmm. is firstly, I read a very strange blog this morning. It's something called like True UFO Tales, something like that. Ooh, I'm pretty legit, sure yeah. my Google search is like really messed up at the moment. <laughs> but there was a, a woman called Michelle. Don't know who this Michelle is, somewhere Michelle. out in the world. She wrote a blog stating, God said to her, he revealed to her in in some manner that the Nephilim giants that Genesis refers to is indeed aliens and that mm. God has given her the ability to channel those aliens so you can actually speak to them interact yeah. with them through this woman God said to her that, that that's yeah. the truth that's and obviously second, no one yeah. can argue with her because God said no yeah, God yeah. said must be true do they have load shedding that's what I want to know <laughs> <laughs> second really crazy thing that someone claimed God said uh, there was actually a trial in Austin Texas a couple of years back and um, the guy on trial was a convicted sex offender child molestation human trafficking not, not a very mm. good guy all no. right let's be honest this about it out. But then, shockingly, the judge actually overturns the jury's decision on he, they, they tried him guilty. He has to go to jail. The judge sends the jury back into deliberation because he said, no, God said to him that this yeah. man is, in fact, innocent. They have to go deliberate all over again because God said he's innocent. Mm. That Weird. is crazy. Crazy. That is crazy. That is crazy. I mean, I even read something just the other day. This guy got a life sentence. This is not part of this. It's just really interesting. <laughs> but he got a life wow. sentence and he, and he like died in prison. But then they revived him. But now he's standing against the court to say he's paid his life sentence. I mean, that's quite interesting. That he crazy. died. Now he's got his second life. So yeah. That's actually quite interesting. But that is crazy. Just to add to that, I think when we, when we speak about this thing around, you know, mm -hmm. like what is God saying? Why do I know he's speaking? There's this major issue around the men and the women. Mm -hmm. um, is this is that, that classic thing where a guy goes, to a girl and says, you know, I heard God say to me that you're my wife. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. this is a major issue and I yeah. think this is something we can just quickly speak about before we go into the bigger juicy yeah. topics. Yeah, before we invite Zander, maybe uh, Aiden just, Lee, maybe you can help us just with this point. Um, but mainly give us some because thoughts of, on, on the idea of saying, well, I heard God saying to me, God speaking to me that, you know, you're my wife. I'm sorry, I just have good like idea, a... Not a good I idea, I just have like a <laughs> reflux reaction when I hear something. It makes me want to puke, if I can be honest. Because um, it's not a bad thing, guys. It's not a bad thing if you hear 
hear God speaking to you about your spouse. That's pretty wonderful. And I mm. mean, that's obviously for a lot of young people. That's that's what you want to know. You know, yeah. should I marry this person yeah. or not? But can I just plead on behalf of all ladies out there, every girl that really loves Jesus and that follows Jesus, is do not walk up to her and tell her that. Yeah. It's just Keep awkward. Keep it between you and God. Yeah. Keep it between you and <laughs> God. Good. Because if, if God did in fact say that to you, then you, you know it's going to happen. Mm. So why put the unnecessary pressure on that poor yeah. girl? Because now you're just confusing her because God said we should be married. Mm. So it doesn't really matter if you are unsure or not. You don't really care about that girl in that moment. You're just mm. putting so much unnecessary pressure on her. So good. can I just ask all guys out there, if you've experienced God saying that to you, that's awesome. But mm. keep it between you and God. Even more yeah. special, try and keep that story until you are actually married to that girl. Because yeah, that just makes good. it so much more special that's in cool. the end. Mm. If you can say, God actually spoke to me a long time ago yes. that we're going to end up getting married. That is a wonderful thing. And that's what happened to me, mm. actually. I was, I've been, I was married for three months already. And then my husband, Neil, told me a story about a dream he actually had where God apparently revealed mm. to him that we are going to get married. And that mm. was just so wonderful. So, mm. yeah. yeah. So, guys, don't do that. Don't put pressure mm. on girls. If God said that to you, keep That's it between brilliant. you yeah. and him. I was at a wedding once where the guy actually took out his diary uh, on the wedding, uh, well, the, at the reception. He took out his diary and he read from his diary stuff that he's never told her, but conversations between him and God um, about her. That's awesome. Um, and it, that was very, very romantic. And it's special yeah, and cool. it's romantic. It's, yeah. not, it's not creepy. I need to get yeah. a diary. <laughs> yeah, you need to get a diary. Yeah, yeah. That's probably the most romantic like yes. speech or like uh, what do you call groom speech that I've seen yes, at a wedding. Yeah. That's awesome. yeah. This is good, good coming yeah. from you, Aiden. We appreciate it. Mainly because yeah. I heard you had some experience in this field of, <laughs> of what happened. I do have some experience <laughs> yeah. in this field, but I, I, I think maybe Arbel should be can the one I to tell the story. The story. Yeah, yeah, please so. tell the story. So, this is a true key, story, yeah, 100% true story. truth. The truth. Okay. So, I've got a good friend, and he was the youth pastor at our church. And then he told Not me, me once. Yeah, Not so me. Another, another youth pastor. L- long time ago. He told ago. me once, and he was very confidential about who these guys were, mm. um, but we knew who the girl was. Yes. Um, but anyway, so the um he said what happened it, in the youth group and so this is high school kids mm. uh, three different guys come up to him at various times and they tell him to the youth pastor and um, say look i think god told me that this girl is my wife nice and then when the third guy came like he decided to start speaking to all three of them and he said look either god is lying to two of you or you know god is lying somewhere <laughs> Or it's not God speaking, it's your hormones speaking. You which, know, so, which is good, good uh, yes. advice. But, but the reason why this story is actually funny for us, we actually don't know, or like the, the youth pastor never told me who the guys were, but the funny part is that it was our very good friend, Aiden Lee, that was this girl. girl. That, and yeah. it was awkward. Yeah. So I didn't end up marrying any you, of them. You get, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it was tough for all thank, the, the thank, guys thank in the God. youth group being in the youth group with you. Yeah. yeah well, you, re- I, you confused a lot of guys. I did, about but that's God's why I voice. can say, guys, yeah. don't confuse girls. Yeah. Don't put the pressure on yeah. them. So that's just good. keep but it But then to you yourself. married Neil. Married Neil and he's amazing. He's yeah. the best. But God actually told him also yes. that you are his wife. Yes, he but did. But he only told you afterwards. And it was so much more special. That's brilliant. That's yes. really cool. Yeah. But anyways, uh, those guys also, I understand that if you've done that before in your life, don't feel bad. I think, you know, all of us as guys, we've been there. You yeah. love. Yeah. But don't do it again. <laughs> yeah. no, don't do it again. I wasn't one of the three. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, yeah. Let's uh, keep on. Uh, let's maybe stick with this conversation. We're going to... Um, Yes. Ask Xander to join us and then uh, speak about some other ways in which God speaks to us. And how do we test whether this was God or is it just my hormones? So as we see how God speaks, there's a, like really way out ways that God speaks. I mean, he speaks audibly, maybe through dreams, um, even maybe visions. And here's the thing is that sometimes that might be a little bit too weird or a little bit out there for oh, us. Intimidating, yeah. Definitely. Mm. And um, the thing is, uh, there are common ways that God actually speaks to us. So Zander, um, what are the common ways that God speaks to us? So in my experience with people, I found these three things to be sort of the most um, frequent ways in which people experience the 
voice of God and I've obviously spoken to people mm. who've experienced the way out ways in which he speaks. But I think the three almost most common ways that he speaks is number one, through the word of God. Obviously mm. reading scripture, Bible. reading the Bible, spending time yeah. in his word. The second one is the people of God, where God actually uses people that walks with us in our journey mm. um, to almost be a means through which he brings about his voice and his will mm. in our life. So it's That's the word of God, the people of God, and then finally the spirit of God, which is that still small voice or that impression that I yeah. often get in my heart that um, s- sort of brings about a conviction that this is God that is speaking to me right now. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And so we're asking this question, um, you know, through this episode, how, how do I know when God speaks to me? And so on the one hand, it's, it's to discover, okay, well, what are the main ways through which God speaks? But then secondly, also, how do I know this was God and not Satan or, you know, just myself or just my hormones, like the story we've just uh, spoken about. So how do, I, how do I test whether this really is the Word of God? Uh, what would you say? I would say in exactly the same three ways. It's in the Word of God. In other words, is what God is saying in line with the theme of Scripture's teaching. Mm-hmm. So in other words, if, if, if I'm experiencing God is saying something that is way out against, like I'm the Messiah. I mean, yeah. there's no two ways about it. I'm not. And, and, and if I was, then I didn't need God to tell me I'm the Messiah. I would no. Yeah. And then the second one is bouncing it off of people. So when yeah. you're saying to, to people that walk with you, your spiritual leaders, maybe your community group, this is what I feel God is saying to me. Does it resonate with them? Do they see it sort of being the trajectory in which your life is going anyways? And then the third thing would be um, the spirit of God. So is there a sense of peace in your heart mm-hmm. when you think about what God is saying or, or does it cause you to feel a sense of, of unease or discomfort or not necessarily discomfort rather let me let me not say that but anxiety or fear or hopelessness or does it bring a sense of peace in your heart so yeah yeah that's good, that's good. yeah so if you uh, maybe you can give us a bit of an example of uh, maybe a time that you can think of that that god spoke to you yeah you know, some of these ways so god speaks to me the whole time which is mm. great but uh, the one of the big the big times in my life when god really spoke to me was um, was about ministry i'm mm. actually going into ministry and i yeah. I remember I was sitting in Cape Town and um, a guy that was leading this church before and gave me a call um, and he said, listen, what you're doing next year? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, don't you want to come and work at the church? And so this was like kind of the people of God where it kind of started. Um, You know, this started with this conversation Mm. and, you know, I started speaking with him and and realizing, well, maybe I'm called to this thing. But then I went Mm. to go and test it with my community. Um, The people in my church went to go see one or two of the leaders, um, went to go see my friends and family, and actually started cultivating this thing. And then I said, okay, well, it doesn't just help they tell me. Mm. I need to hear this from God. I need to hear this from Him. And so I started spending time in His Word, spending time with God um, more intently, um, mm. and on focused on this thing. And it's just beautiful how God put key scriptures down for me, uh, especially not just to join ministry, but actually for me, what my ministry yeah. is going to look like, um, which is a beautiful thing. Mm. Um, and then lastly, I asked myself, well, do I have peace around this thing? Is the Holy Spirit actually giving me peace mm. um, with this decision? And all three kind of like marked green, or, you know, the green lights went on. And that's when I knew, okay, this is God speaking, and now I need to react. Yeah, I need to do something good, yeah. about it. So that's pretty cool. Mm. And I, for one, am so thankful that you were obedient to the voice of God because through that, you gave me a work wife. <laughs> Oval's my work wife. As you, well. You're the work wife. You're the wife. <laughs> <laughs> you're the wife. I'm the work, you're the wife. Yeah. Hey. That's, I think that's why next week the yeah. lady should take you, over. You are, I think that sounds pretty offensive to, yeah. to women. You are yeah. the work because you're a piece of work here. Bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So anyways, if you had, uh, let me just maybe ask this question. I think so oftentimes we, we'd say, okay, no, we hear God speaking mm. um, and and when you know, sometimes someone comes to me and uh, you, you get the sense that this person has already made up their mind. They're just using scripture to sort of back what they want to do. Yeah. Um, and even when they hear other Christians uh, tell them, I don't think that's really what the Bible says. Or I don't think you should be doing that. They sort of ignore that and say, no, well, but God told me, you know. So um, I think it's very important that your heart has to be at a place where people can actually tell you, listen, um, you know, that's crazy what you're saying. <laughs> um, have you ever experienced something like that where maybe, you know, God, you experienced God saying something, but then your friends didn't just tell you, 
Yeah, sure, go for it. Um, yeah, um, maybe just a quick funny story. Before that, we were on a youth camp once and we had a track that we presented on dating. So a guy comes <laughs> to me after the session and he goes, but what about that scripture that says, El Capote to Daxel? Every pot no, has yeah. a Every, Every pot, pot has Somewhere a in the Bible. It's exactly, yeah. It's yeah. right yeah. after that one, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Exactly, yeah, all, yeah. Of these, all of these the scriptures book, yeah. in one, Second Proverbs yeah. 3. I think it's opinions 4. <laughs> yeah, it might be exactly. opinions 4. Yeah. But but, Moses um, 4. <laughs> yeah, a story from my own personal life is I was one of those people who I felt God speak to me specifically about who my wife is in a dream as well. Had this dream where Anal and I stood before our Bible school team and we announced to the team we were going into a dating relationship. And then I woke up and when I woke up, I was like completely yeah. in love with Anel. And then I sat up right in my bed and I'm like, God, is this you? Hello? <laughs> so What's romantic. happening? Hello? And so I, I immediately felt God take me back to that scripture where he says, set your, uh, your eyes on things above and not on earthly things. Mm. And I knew for a fact that sure. I wasn't convinced whether this was God speaking. I just knew God wanted me to focus on him. And so a year passed from that. And I um, immediately after that, I spoke to some of my leaders and told them, listen, this is what I dreamt. This is what I'm experiencing. And they were just like, we're not saying that it's not God. But we just don't see the timing being right now. We just don't yeah. see any any um, advantage in you sharing your feelings with her right now. And so well, I went through a year's journey where I didn't say anything to her, walked it out with leaders. And I think it was probably after about a year and a month. Um, it was in January when I, I spoke to my leaders again and they sort of started feeling that God is maybe releasing me to share how I felt with Anel, which I did in February. Um, to which she responded that she actually started um, developing feelings towards me in mm. December, so. which means that if I had acted mm. in the moment that I felt God speaking to me, I would have completely missed yeah. God's timing. Sure. So, so it wasn't in, it wasn't necessarily out of line of what God was saying. Yes, mm. yeah. but um, the people, the leaders that were walking with me, just helped me to nail the timing yeah, in that as so well. Cool. So, yeah. such a beautiful story. Yeah, so it's so important that you, um, if you want to tune into the voice of God, you need to tune into family uh, in terms of uh, you know the the church that God has put you in, mm. uh, because that really creates safety. Yeah, um, and and sometimes also to speak to not like you say you spoke to some of your leaders, mm. uh, not only to your buddies, yeah. um, but to really you know uh, be accountable. Yeah. Uh, what, what would you say also, I think earlier you spoke or before the show, you just mentioned the whole idea that obedience is sometimes so important in us hearing God's voice. And if we don't, if we're never going to be obedient, then we're going to sort of stop hearing God's voice. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the big thing is, and I, this, this would be like kind of a younger generation thing is, mm. is I know I you know, just came out of high school, I asked God, God, what do you want to do with my life? Like, what do you want mm. me to do? Must I be a street sweeper? Must I be a politician? Mm. You know, what do you want me to do? Please don't let me be a politician. <laughs> but, you know, I ask these questions. And the crazy thing is, like, God actually showed me this, like, vision. It sounds pretty weird. But mm. he gave me this picture of, like, these two camps of cows. And this one group of cows are just lying down, doing nothing. And the other group is kind of just moving around in the camp. Mm. And all the farmer wants to do is move them to a different space. Now, the one group he has to, like, prong and mm. shock and motivate to get out. And the other group, all he has to do is open the gate and guide. Mm. And so God kind of convicted me around this thing to say, Brent, I want to show you, but you need to start moving. You mm. need to start being obedient. You need to start doing things in your vicinity where you are now. And I think for a lot of young people asking the question, you know, what do I have to do with my life? Where am mm. I going? It's actually asking this thing, where, where are you right now? And are you obedient right now? Sure. Are you faithful what God is giving mm. you right now? If it's mm. matric, if it's uh, you know, mm. high school, if it's busy studying, yeah. are you being faithful with the thing that God has given you now? Because that's moving. And God, mm. all He needs to do then is guide you, not yeah. prong you into the direction. Yes, yeah. um, and I think that is an amazing thing to mm. live by, is to say, you know what, let's yeah. proactively start you know, asking God and let's proactively yeah. start moving into ways that God can speak to us. Yes. Um, yeah. Rather than just, you know, sitting on your bed and going, okay, God, speak to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it looks sense, a bit yeah. different. Yeah. Um, actually step yeah. into those spaces where God mm. speaks. Yeah, and I think that's, a, um, you know, I suppose a desire that you might also have is that you want to hear the voice of God. And I think the sort of encouragement would be to tune in. Mm. Um, you know, there, there are ways in which you can put yourself in a uh, place or a position where you are going to hear God's voice more often. Yes. Uh, I like to think it's sort of like God's voice is this radio um, 
what do you call it, like Radio a frequency signal, frequency signal that's going out. And it's uh, God's always ready to speak. That's the wonderful thing about mm. God's grace is that, you know, when we ask Him, he, He's not going to say, well, no, last week you didn't want to speak to me, so I'm not going to speak <laughs> no. to you this week. You know, He's not you know, petty uh, yeah. like that. He's really Definitely a God not. with a big heart. And so every time we come, God is ready to speak to you. Sometimes mm. it's just we are not uh, tuned in mm. uh, to this frequency. So, so it's sort of like we... Um, we need to tune in uh, from outside. Now, I think for, for uh, when we read the Bible, Jesus explains pretty, um, uh, well, he's pretty clear on the idea that the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to be speaking to us. So it's through the Holy Spirit that God communicates uh, to you and me. And in John 14, verse 26, Jesus says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. Um, and, uh, but as soon as I think we say, okay, the Holy Spirit, He's going to speak to you. Then you've got this picture of, I have to go meditate on my bed, <laughs> yeah. like Holy Spirit, Come speak to me. To me. Um, and, you know, so, put so on the right song and yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. just make, blow so, out the candle. So the question is, how do I tune into this Holy Spirit? And, and that's the wonderful thing about Scripture is God has made it simple for us. Mm. If you read the Bible and you read who this Jesus is, you, you learn who God actually is. And through that, the Holy Spirit is revealing himself mm. to you. And I, I want to, I mean, people that say, well, I don't know how God speaks. Mm. Just start reading your Bible. And by reading yeah. your Bible, through that, the Holy Spirit will start speaking. Mm, definitely. Um, and the other thing is that sometimes, I th that's the way that God has spoken to me most of the time. It's through Scripture, but it's still the Holy Spirit yeah. in a moment you know, reveal certain things. And then other times when I'm just walking around, I'm reminded of what is happening in Scripture. So sometimes it's just mm. because you've got knowledge of the Bible, mm. you know what God actually wants because you know His heart. So you just yeah. apply it in different situations. He, you know, it doesn't have to remind you, like, be kind. Like, you, you see it in the Bible. Yeah. So, you know, you, you can apply it. So that's all God's voice. Um, and this is what I love about this Scripture. It says that... Um, the Holy Spirit will bring into remembrance, He will remind you of what I taught you, you know, in the Bible, essentially, if you go read who Jesus is. Um, and uh, R.T. Kendall once said this, um, the Holy Spirit cannot remind an empty head. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why, why I think it's so important that you just keep on reading your Bible. Fill your head with Scripture. Sometimes it doesn't feel like God is speaking audibly now, but just fill your head with Scripture because the Holy Spirit will know what to bring to your attention and also what to remind you of um, at certain times. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really great. To add to that, I, just, I had a conversation in the past few weeks with a younger guy and he came to me and he said, Brent, I can't hear God speak. Sure. And then I just asked, have you read your Bible? <laughs> yeah. Because good start, that is God's word. He literally calls it his word. So if you mm. want to hear him speak, read his word. It's his yeah. word. He said it. Mm. And I think that's a beautiful thing, just to dive back into that mm. simplistic, um, very easy to understand. Let me read my Bible and hear what God is saying. Yes, yeah. that's good. And it's yeah, not cool. just uh, almost for the knowledge part of Scripture. I think when you, the more you read Scripture, the more you, you get familiar with what God's voice sounds like. Yeah. What are some of the yeah. things that he will end up saying? Mm. So uh, there are some messages that you don't even have to tell me it's from Brent. I, I know Brent <laughs> yeah. will say the, <laughs> yeah. these kinds of yeah. things. And in the same way, when we read scripture, we mm. have an idea of what are some of the things that God would say? Um, what are some of the themes that he would speak about? What does his voice mm. sound like? And I, I think that's, that's the beauty of reading scripture mm. is it dials you in to be able to recognize his voice. Yeah, yeah and I think it's, it's just the obedience of time. Like spending time with God. Yeah. Um, it's that classic thing like you would understand this. You know when you're in the shop and your dad whistles in the shop? You know it's your dad yeah, whistling. you know that whistle. Then yeah. you go like, oh, Flip, yeah. where's my dad? Yeah. You know? And it's the same thing with God. Yeah, the reason good, why yeah. you know it's your dad mm. is because you spend time with your dad. You know his whistle. Mm. You've heard it a hundred times. Mm. And the same thing with God. The more we time we spend with mm. him, the more we're going to be able to hear his voice. Yes. And actually... Yeah, spent time. Yeah. We hope that's an encouragement for you or that helps you. Um, so practically, I think the three main ways that we've spoken about that God speaks to me or how do I know when God speaks to me is it's through the Word of God, it's through the Spirit of God and through the people of God. Mm. Um, and so we want to invite you or encourage you to really dig into the Scriptures and allow the Holy Spirit to start speaking to you and also tune into a, a, a biblical community, a, a church community, so that you can test the voice of God. But also it's a, it's a place where people will be sharing words with you. Um, so that's the easiest way to tune in. It's the Bible, the Spirit of God and the people of God. Awesome. Bless you, and we'll see you next week for that special episode where Aiden Lee is going to be taking over.
Hello Dr. Daya, my name is Antay and today I thought that I would share how the Lord came and oh my word, I is rechtig jammer jylle. <laughs> Through that I, oh my word, I is rechtig jammer. <laughs> Hello Dr. Um, my name is Ante and today I thought that I would share how the Lord came and changed my heart through community and through fellowship. So um, at the beginning of the year I was really going through some very bad emotional stuff and if you looked at me you wouldn't say that I was um, going through that because I was really good at hiding it because I didn't want anybody to know about what was actually going on in me. Um, so my motto became that if I couldn't figure it out for myself nobody would be able to help me. And I saw that I didn't want to share it with anybody, but after a while I, I realized that I didn't want to talk to the Lord about it as well. And I didn't want to be honest with the Lord as well. And it became really unhealthy for me. I was really doing very badly. And um, I was fighting for myself, fighting for my survival, fighting for just fighting for myself. And after a while, I got a verse in Exodus 14, verse 14, which says, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. And after that, I realized that I have to go to the Lord with all of my problems, with everything. And I just laid in front of the Lord one evening and I just said, Lord, this is what's going on in my head. This is what's going on with me. Please come help me. Please come change my mindset. And he really came through for me. And after that, I realized that I have to be honest with the people around me, the people in my community. And I, I started opening up towards people. And the fruits of it has been really great. I really got, I, I really uh, found healing in that. I really found healing within people. And through talking to people, my relationship with the Lord really grew so much more. And I couldn't be more thankful for my community. I couldn't be more thankful for radiance because that has really been the the, the best thing this year for me so no. well thank you for that testimony and uh, we want to encourage you <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for that testimony and uh, we want to invite you and encourage you to also share your story if you'd like to share your story with a bigger audience let us know we'd love to get it on camera uh, so that you can also tell other people about what God has done in your life. And now we... Uh, uh, yeah. Do you see, I don't think we should sit exactly the same. Yeah, we should just act like we know what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Just Find your own start. style. Anyway, so we are going to go to the generosity moment now. So each week we've been giving you a bit of feedback on what the generosity fund funds. Yeah. What the generosity fund funds. Funds yeah. funds. What the fund so funds. Yeah. Sounds fun. Yeah, and, and in with this generosity ask, I mean, we're going to be doing an ask next week mm -hmm. um, for this fund. This is something that's above and beyond your normal giving. Um, we're asking a monthly, you know, amount that would be given to this fund, um, mainly because this, we want to see our city changed. Mm -hmm. And it starts with that. It starts with being generous as a family. Awesome. So let's go see the generosity fund funds. funds. Mm. Are you like miming me now? Yeah. It's okay. Right. I want to learn. And learn from the best, obviously. Uh, so firstly, uh, as you know, if you've been part of our church for some time now, we are passionate about the nations. And for something like the past 10 years, we've been going to the, the nation of Zimbabwe um, and crossing our borders each year. And uh, for the last three or four years, we've been um, visiting the nation of Lesotho also. And in these countries, we are actually working with local leaders, local pastors um, who are actually uh, taking the lead in local churches on that side of the border. And we just go to strengthen them and encourage them to be a blessing to them because we believe that God wants to build the kingdom of God through them and so we partner with local churches to see those countries being empowered by those uh, churches in those areas uh, obviously this year in 2020 because of regulations we were not able to cross the borders uh, but we are still passionate and committed to those relationships we have uh, with those churches in those countries and we can't wait to go and visit them again next year Christians respond differently in times of crisis. We see crisis from a different lens. We see crisis as an opportunity to love. We are driven by love. The love of Jesus compels us. This love we feel is not a quiet emotion. No, it is a burning passion. 
passion and all-consuming energy that is visible in our everyday mission and action. Our city needs the love of Jesus more than ever before. In Doxa Daya Bloemfontein, we want to love our city by reaching the lost, healing the pain, and restoring that which is broken. Generosity 2020, driven by love. Uh, next up, we want to tell you a bit more about Life Center, and for that, we've invited Ellery, who is actually the one taking responsibility for our Life Center. So, Ellery, why don't you tell us a bit more about Life Center and uh, what is it that we do there? So, as a church, um, it's part of our calling to tend to the the brokenness in our city, and I think Life Center as a ministry is one of the ways that we are actually doing that. Um, so we have teams trained in specific ministries in Life Center. We have a, what we call a soul care ministry, a specific pre type of um, session that we have with people to guide them into wholeness, um, pastoral care ministry, uh, different kinds of support groups, specifically a divorce care group. I don't know, it's running almost now. Um, and then we also like to partner with certain professionals in the city that works mm. clinically with people. We like to see ourselves as that very much needed bridge that some people need or the support that some people need to actually enter into a more professional or clinical type of um, support or care. Um, and that is our heart and that is what we are all mm. about. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and something you've told me uh, in a conversation earlier that mm. so many people, even if they're not part of a particular church mm. and they are in need of something like this or mm. in need of counseling, um, people are not afraid to actually come to a church mm. uh, for counseling. And through Life Center, we, we are able to actually serve those people um, or refer them to some of our other partners. Um, Definitely. I yeah. think the church is the most accessible space mm. to come to for help. Um, it's open. There's always someone here yeah. to help you. So we want to be able to do that. And if people come come in um, to receive any sort of any form of care um, mm. that we want to be able to help them with that or connect them to the right space That's good. to receive the care yeah. that they need. And what are you looking forward to for next year or for the future? What, what excites you about the future? Well, we are very excited to expand this ministry, to see mm. more people serving, more people getting called and trained into the ministry that, um, that, yeah, that they are also called to, to see, to partner or collaborate with more professionals in the city. Mm. I think it's something that I'm very excited about um, to build that bridge even stronger between ministry and church and the professional or more clinical settings. Um, mm. But yeah, I think we are very excited to expand and our reach of impact in the city. Wonderful. So important that as a church that we don't only care about the, the souls of people, where they're going to go when they die. It's not only about the lostness, but it's also about the brokenness um, in our city. And next, we would love to tell you about the Alpha Course, which is a ministry that we've been a part of for the past number of years. And uh, we've got Lorin that's going to be telling us more about the Alpha Course. So, Lorin, what is Alpha? And what did you do in 2020? Well, Alpha, thank you very much for having me. And um, yeah, Alpha is a ministry, uh, Alpha, the Alpha Course is a ministry that I'm very excited about because it reaches the lost of our city. It's actually a ministry that focuses on people who have big questions about life. Those big questions of why I'm on this planet and is there a God and what's the purpose of my life? Those big questions. And it gives people an opportunity, an open space where they can come and ask those questions and have open discussions, share their own opinions, but in the same time, hear the opinion of Jesus and hear what he has to say about these questions. And um, uh, like every year, it's been really a powerful year for us. Um, this year also, something very significant happened. We had our very first online Alpha course, which was very powerful to see people opening up over an online platform to talk about these subjects. And God just still touching people while we praying for them. And He's just so faithful in this with every single person that we were praying for. And we saw people forgiving people from the past allowing, opening up their hearts to Jesus. We saw people getting released and delivered from some stuff in their past that they were struggling with and God just coming in with a hand of healing. We got people that was baptized with the Holy Spirit oh. while we were praying for them over an online platform. So it's really powerful just to see what Jesus does in this ministry. And it touches the lost of our city, which excites me a lot. 
It is really amazing that we've been able to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus in spite of regulations like we've had uh, in 2020 or with the lockdown. So that's it for this week's Sunday Night Live. I have a very important announcement to make and that is that next week on Sunday Night Live, we are going to have an all-girl takeover. The estrogen is going to be through the roof, going to be speaking about what does it mean to be a strong, godly woman, where does feminism fit into the picture and a whole bunch more. So make sure you tune in to that. But for now, let's head over to Tumi, our announcement guy. Hey guys, so the announcement is this week, Wednesday, on the 26th of August, we are having a live Facebook worship and prayer night. You don't want to miss out on that. And next week, on the 6th of September, we are having a drive-in church at our Fichat Park campus. And on the 13th, we're having a drive-in church at our central campus. Drive-in church is when you fill your car with your friends and your family and you come to our parking lot and tune into our very own Doxadere radio station as we spend time in God's word and worship together. It's going to be amazing. You guys do not want to miss out. So remember to sign up for that in the description below. And guys, as you've been hearing, this month is Generosity Month and we want to reach the city. If you guys want to help us do that, there's three ways that you can help out. You can give through Payfast, EFT or Zappa. And guys, remember to like, share and subscribe on our YouTube channel. See you guys next week. It's been Tumi. It's been great. See you next week.